So, last night we slept in this uh, Walmart parking lot, which if you watch my channel is absolutely nothing new. I sleep here all the time, but it is a pretty gloomy day out. I don't know if you can see those trees shaking over there. It's really windy, it's been windy all night. Blowing in through my fan. Rained a little bit last night, but it is not too cold out, which is good. So if you haven't been following along on my trip, from Maryland all the way over to California. Or maybe if you're new here, my name is Ryan. I live in the back of my self-converted camper van right here. Last night we slept in a Walmart parking lot and I am currently on a road trip from Maryland back to California to build out a mini truck camper. And if you have been following along since my last video, which I think was in Missouri, we have traveled about another six hours and we are on the border of Oklahoma and Texas. And today we are heading into the Lone Star State and hopefully find somewhere Pretty cool to clamp. I just realized I put on a full grout fit. I guess it doesn't matter. So the good thing with uh, stealth camping at a Walmart is it's convenient when you gotta go to the grocery store in the morning. I know it probably feels like I go to the grocery store in every video, and I pretty much do, but it's only because I need to get a few things for whatever I'm cooking that night. It's never like I need to get the full recipe because I already have most of it, but there's always like four or five things I need, so that's why I'm always there. But now we gotta walk about a mile back to our van all the way to the back over there. Also, if you guys have been following along on my trip, and you can still see I have a sink full of dishes, that is because I still haven't been able to find water, but I think I'm gonna be able to find somewhere today. So today, since we're driving into Texas and camping up just north of Amarillo, I figured for our meal for dinner tonight, we're gonna to be cooking some chili, which since 1977 has been the state food of Texas. And Texas is actually home of the international chili competition every year. And I'm actually doing a uh, Texas style chili, at least from what I found online. <laughs> small town Texas. I wanted to be a little bit safe about uh, picking up water today. So I found a few spots along the way, actually two, one right here, supposedly, at this park where we can get some water. Hopefully fill up our tanks and then one a little bit closer. But just in case the one a little bit closer doesn't have any, I wanted to stop here to see if we could get some water here. So it says on the sign right here that this is a dump station, which I'm guessing is uh, that nasty hole right there. And I don't really want to use that water to fill up my tank because dump station water typically isn't the best. Oh, but there's a spigot over here. So there's a spigot here that might be good for water. And then there's something else over here that looks like it has water in it. So I'm gonna go check that out. Also, it's beautiful weather out right now. We got out of the clouds into the sun. It's like 70 degrees. Ah uh ha -huh. Yes. Okay, so I see that these spigots here say drinking water. So the only issue with these ones is they're not threaded. They do have water, but I can't really hook up my hose to them. But I'm gonna be honest, I think that spigot over there, it's gotta be fresh water. Looks good. I've definitely filled up my water tank at worse places than this, so. I'm not too worried about it, plus I've got a four stage filter built into my van. And a filter on my hose. And I was on completely empty, so it's probably gonna be like 10 minutes before the tank's full. I don't know why I've had such bad luck with finding places to fill up with water recently, but now that we're mostly back out west, it should be a little bit easier to find uh, places to fill up on the regular. And this place is cool, they actually have hookups for your RV. This place is completely free. They've got a dump station, water, electrical porch where you can plug in. And I think there's three spots here where you could technically have an RV and stay. I mean, it's not the prettiest spot, it's just kind of at this in the middle of nowhere industrial park, but can't complain for free. All right, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see the water line on that tank. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So we're just about full. Good enough for me. Go ahead and turn that off and get out of here.
So we are not too far from our campsite where we're at right now. Only like 35 minutes away, so let's head over there. All right, so this is pretty much it. Right up around this bend, up this curve, around this hill. This is where we're gonna be staying, right on the edge. You can see it all the way in the distance of Lake Meredith. And it looks absolutely beautiful. And I think I've stayed here before, like two years ago, maybe a year ago. All right, looks like there's another van lifer up there. A beautiful spot, wow. I did stay here before actually. But I'm gonna pick one of these nice spots up here. These are completely free, which is pretty incredible because this is amazing. We're gonna call this camp for the night. I think I'm gonna go right down here where it's a little bit flat. Yeah, this one seems nice. I think this might be the exact same spot I stayed in last time. This <laughs> is gonna be our home for the night and this is spectacular. I love coming out west. Ugh. So quiet. This is our uh, camp spot for the night. I got my own little private pavilion. The fire risk was extremely high today, so I don't think I'll be making a fire, although they do have giant fire pits. You cannot beat this view. This is pretty spectacular. It's gonna be nice waking up here tomorrow and having a coffee. It almost kind of reminds me of Lake Havasu. Yeah, sun is very bright. Sunset tonight is gonna be absolutely stunning. Clouds have really dissipated. There's some in the distance though, which honestly sometimes makes the sunsets even better when there's like clouds way off in the distance. But yeah, this is the beautiful Lake Meredith. All right, so I was sitting here with my door open for like five minutes and like 15 flies flew in. Get out, get out. And there's a fly bag right there. So I'm thinking I'm gonna pull up a little bit and maybe try to get away from them. I might do a uh, quick lap around actually, see if there's a better spot. If not, I'll just hopefully pull up here and be fine. But a lot of these spots, if you can tell, this one's like on a hill, it's like slanted up. I don't really feel like sleeping on a hill tonight. So hopefully we can find somewhere not as slanted as these ones. That don't have flies. All right, so I think I'm just gonna pull in behind this transit here. This spot's got a pretty good view too. I'm less harsh with the sun anyways, so. Hopefully there's not as many flies up here. That's where we were down there before. Now we're up here. And we've got just as good of a view. Now that we have, get out of here flies. Running water, we can do these dishes. But I think actually before I do those dishes, I'm gonna get started on cooking because this stew is gonna take quite a while to, uh, to cook up. So I want to get it at least started, get it going, and then we can tackle this later. But I do need this pot, so I will have to clean that. I don't know why I said stew. It's not a stew, it's a chili. And I'm actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really know the difference between a stew and a chili. I also got some ingredients to do something with those potatoes, because if you guys watched my last video, you'll know that the grocery store only had five pound bags of potatoes. And I've got a bunch of extras left over, so we're going to make a little side with those as well. All right, so as with every recipe, first thing we got to do, prep our ingredients. <sighs> what a great view to cook with. It does not get much better than that. I know they say that a lot, but this one's pretty good. First on the chopping block, onion. And some garlic. Got my fancy knife. Hopefully we don't have another finger cut incident. So this chili is a little bit different than I would normally make it, uh, according to the website that I'm looking at, Texas Chili, which is the recipe that I'm following, does not have beans in it and pretty much just has meat and then sauce and broth and all that kind of stuff. And like I said before, chili has been Texas's state dish since 1977. And apparently, according to what I read online, it is a very heated debate. Some Texans think chili originated in Texas, while most New Mexicans think it originated there. I didn't dig too deep, so I don't really know exactly where it originated, but all I know is in 1977, Ben Grant Marshall convinced the Texas legislature that chili was the only dish that was worthy of being recognized as the state's dish. So there you go. That is your very brief history of chili in the state of Texas. So there's not a lot of prep work that goes into this. I just got to dice up these onions and then these gigantic cloves of garlic that I found in the grocery store. And that is pretty much it. So we'll mince these up and we should be good to go for our chili. There we go. Garlic and onions prepped and ready to go. Now we can grab our beef out of the fridge and get that all nice and seasoned up and get that browning. So for the seasoning, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. Hit it with some salt, some black pepper, and a little bit of this chili lime seasoning. And then we'll just get that all mixed up and incorporated in there. Make sure they're all coated evenly and we should be good to cook them. All right, so we get this burner turned on. Might have to close the door a little bit. The wind likes to uh, make it hard for my pants to get hot by blowing around the uh, flame down there. Get some oil in there. So I probably should have done this in um, batches, but I just don't have time to wait for that. So we're doing it all at once. 
get this meat all nice and browned up. It doesn't have to be cooked all the way through because it's going to sit in the stew for like three hours and kind of simmer and finish cooking. And actually, while those are cooking up, there's one thing I forgot to do. I couldn't find fresh jalapenos at the store for some reason. The only thing I find is this, and I just remember that I got whole and not pre-sliced. I'm gonna have to slice these up real quick while we wait for that meat. And I think I'm only gonna use about three of these. All right, so now that these are seated, we can just dice them up real quick. And now we're finally all prepped. Jalapenos, garlic, onion, steak. It's just about done browning. Definitely too much in here. I didn't get a nice sear on any of these pieces, but I'm not too worried about it. But now that we've got our steak all done, add a little bit more oil to the pan, and then we can throw in our jalapeno peppers and our onions, and let those cook up until they're nice and fragrant for about 10 minutes. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes, and there was one last thing I had to prep that I forgot. It was some chipotle peppers and adobo sauce, so I deseeded those and cut those and chopped those up, just some canned chipotle peppers and adobo. Now we can add our garlic, our chipotle peppers, a can of crushed tomatoes, some tomato sauce, and then a bunch of seasonings, starting with our chili lime seasoning. Bunch of that in there. Some chili powder, smoked paprika, some coriander, just a little bit of that. Some cumin, just a little bit of cinnamon, three bay leaves, a little bit more salt. Mix that all together. And then we can add our beef back in. Missed a few pieces. Along with the final ingredient, a few cups of beef stock. Now we'll just get that all nice and mixed together, incorporate it in. And then the last thing we gotta do until we're done, bring this to a boil and then we'll cover it and simmer it for around two and a half to three hours. I really need to start when I'm making chili cooking earlier in the day. So we'll wait for that to boil. I'm gonna get some of this stuff cleaned up, put away, and we're gonna get started on the potatoes, but the potatoes are super easy. So for these potatoes, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. We're kind of doing a deconstructed baked potato in a way. And you'll see what I mean by that when we're done. But basically I'm gonna make it so every single bite tastes exactly the same, as opposed to a baked potato where some bites you get a lot of bacon, you get a lot of cheese, or you just get only potato. This way, every single bite will be the exact same. These potatoes are very weird shapes, so it's gonna be a little bit weird, but basically gonna cut these into like one fourth inch discs. Now we can take these, separate them out. And don't worry, this time I actually did do the prep work. My oven is already preheating for these. But we'll hit each of these with some olive oil and then some salt. And you can pretty much do, I guess, any kind of seasoning mix you wanted for this, but we're gonna do salt, garlic powder, and then just a little bit of paprika over the top. And I'm gonna get all of these nice and coated on all sides. And there we go, all nice and seasoned up on my pizza trays. We can go ahead and pop these in the preheated oven. And we'll let these cook for just about 30 minutes. And then there's a few more steps of finishing them off. Looks like we got those potatoes in the oven at just about the perfect time. Our chili is boiling. Cover that. Turn that down to a simmer. And now, while we wait for both of those to cook, go sit outside and enjoy the remainder of what sunset we have left. Which it looks like the clouds have kind of obstructed up mostly. The sun has pretty much set. Clouds kind of ruined it a little bit, but we got a really awesome pink glow that came out like right underneath the clouds about 30 minutes ago, which was pretty nice, but <clears throat> stew was still brewing. I got the fan on, pulling out some of that air so it doesn't stink up the whole van. But I think these potatoes are just about ready for a flip. Ooh, those look so good. Do each of these a little flip -a rooney and now back in the oven they go for another 15 minutes and we still got around two hours on the stew. I really should have started this earlier, but at least we'll have a nice little appetizer while we wait for that to finish. But I will see you guys in about 10 minutes. These babies are looking beautiful. So now we've got our potatoes. We've got to make them loaded. So to each one of these little potato coins, I'm going to add a nice little dollop of cheese. Nice generous amount on each. And then the same thing with these bacon bits. Just a nice little dollop on each of them. Yeah, I feel like Oprah. You get bacon, you get bacon, you get bacon, you get bacon. Now that we've got them all cheesed and baconed up, they can go back in the oven for yet again three to four minutes. 
basically just until that cheese is all nice and melty. There we go, just like that, it's been five minutes. Pull these out for the final time. Ooh, those look so good. Ooh, those look delicious. And this way, these loaded potato bites, kind of like the ones you can get from uh, the freezer section, like the TGI Friday ones, every single bite is perfect. And I feel like if you're going to like a holiday party or like a Super Bowl party or something like that, these are like these would be like the perfect little hors d'oeuvre snacks to bring. And then the finishing touch on top of these, just a little bit of chives. Make them look all nice and pretty. And there we go. Those are our Van Life loaded potato poppers. I don't know if you guys could hear it in the background, but I've got Fortnite loaded up because uh, a bunch of my friends texted me, said they're getting on. I figured since I got two hours to kill until this chili is done, might as well hop on and play a few. But before we do that, first, let's give these bad boys a try. Oh, that looks so good. Got some sour cream dipping sauce. Tastes pretty much exactly like you think it would. And this is really good because I was starving. All I had today was that one egg sandwich and I forgot how long it takes to make chili, but let's kill two hours. Play some Fortnite. Alrighty, it has been about three hours. The van smells absolutely heavenly. And I am starving, so I think it is time to finally <laughs> eat our chili. And next time I make chili or something, I'm gonna start a little bit earlier. That looks so good. I'm trying to avoid the bay leaves. I think you're technically supposed to fish those out, but whatever. Shouldn't have picked the spoon with a hole in the bottom. And I decided while I was sitting here waiting for that uh, stew to finish boiling that we should have waited till tomorrow to do my dishes. I don't feel like doing them tonight. So there we go. That is our Texas style chili without beans. And apparently, traditional chili doesn't have beans. There's still a few flies in here, and I still see a few of them flying around. So. Very excited to uh, try this out. Oh, the meat is so tender. It just like breaks apart. You saw that? There was a fly. He wants my chili. He does want my chili. Oh, I got him. No, I didn't. Nice big scoop. It's probably burning hot, but cheers. <sighs> ah. I'm gonna let that cool down. Very good, but I just burned my tongue in like eight different places. <sighs> now that my mouth is properly burned, I've given it some time to cool off, but I mean, this meat is so, so unbelievably tender. You can just break it up so easily just with a spoon. Cheers, again. That's pretty good. I will say I did not expect it to be so hearty because I didn't really put a lot in there, but the crushed tomatoes really add a lot to the thickness of the dish, but overall it's pretty good. A little bit spicy because the jalapenos and the chipotle peppers, but definitely very tasty. And the meat is just so tender. This would be great with some like garlic bread or something, not just raw, uncooked bread. But definitely a winner. And I feel like it's gonna be very filling. It's always uh, it's always worth it when you make stew to wait that extra couple of hours. And I also have a ton left over, so I'll have stew for the next two or three days. With that, it is getting late. It is already 9.30. We let that soup, we let that, I keep calling it stew, chili. We let that chili cook for a lot longer than I anticipated. It is completely dark outside. Someone just drove by. It'll be nice waking up here in the morning. I think there might be showers here, so I might try to get one of those tomorrow, but I don't know, I guess we'll see. I think that is it for me for tonight. I'm probably just gonna finish this chili, watch a movie and go to bed. So I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good morning. I don't know if you can tell, you hear my fan up there jumping up and down because it's so windy out. I probably slept in a little bit today, which was nice. And uh, I have decided that I will not be driving anywhere today. I've been going nonstop for the last five days and. I haven't had a day off from driving. But the reason I'm staying here is because this is kind of the perfect spot. It's got outdoor tables that I can sit at and eat breakfast. Probably won't sit at that table today because of how windy it is, but it's got trash cans. It's got a beautiful view. It's got bathrooms all the way up there, and supposedly there's a shower up there. Don't know if there actually is or not, but I think that is going to be it for this video. So as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, please think about clicking that subscribe button and I will catch you guys next time.